So welcome to Rest of Designs guys, the channel that brings you Mark II, Mark III and now Mark IV content. In today's video, we're covering my daily driver wagon. As you may have seen in the last video, there was loads of things broken, it was broken, that I've repaired and kind of rectified, but there's still quite a lot of things that need to be done on it and I found more things that are broken on it. It's broken, but we won't be covering a broken episode today, that I'll leave that for the next one. Today we're just focusing on getting this car lowered and also putting the 312 brakes on it and improving the braking system and putting all these power flex bushes on it on the rear beam and anti roll bars and all the rest of it because I've taken it literally everything off the Smugglers Mark IV Beat Brexit Golf which came fully loaded with so much stuff on it so I've taken all that stuff off and I've literally transplanted it all onto here and also I've all sprayed it black I've called it my uh, h and Black Edition so it doesn't stand out here I mean unfortunately the car obviously is going to look lowered but at least it won't be big bright yellow shocks and red springs and stuff like that. Right, so let's get on with it. All right, so let me walk you guys through it. So the car had 312s on it. So it's got the 312 uh, caliper carriers. The discs were, the pads were worn anyway. So I had these m uh, sport ones here. m grooved and uh, drilled with m pads. Paint up the calipers. Actually, they actually came with braided lines, which is really, really cool. So that's going to be the front upgrades because I think this 215 comes with 280s as standard. So this is going to feel way, way different. The 312s with the braided lines and these discs and pads. Okay, so let's move over to the subframe. The subframe has been painted up as well as the wishbones. The wishbones have PowerFlex bushes, front and rear. It also, I've noticed this has a, a PowerFlex for the dog bone bush, which is a bonus because I think the one on my car when you side it up it rattles so I think that's worn as well as also this anti-roll bar is super thick and it's H&R anti-roll bar and it also has the bigger hoop so you can go really low without touching it unfortunately these rear bushes are actually shot but I'm going to leave them in there for now and what I'm going to do is in the UK I've actually got some 034 um, aluminium inserts which is off my track car which is going to go into here so that's going to be a, a nice update for later on in the year those are the rear springs, again, painted in black with these really, really nice H&R adjusters. So kind of they sit at the bottom of the thing, you literally jack the car up and you can just turn the screw in and out. It makes life so much easier to get the right height on the back or if you've got extra load, you wanna lift it up and stuff. As well as that's the rear anti-roll bar. Those are the front hubs, again, all painted up black with the springs all in black and stuff and that's the rear shocks. So yep, yeah, so this is what I'm gonna be doing today is fitting this little lot all onto the wagon. So I've done the back already outside and already that looks really quite nice. You can kind of imagine what it's going to look like. And that is actually on its highest setting. Now I don't know obviously because it's got the reverse rake, it's putting more weight on the back. I was hoping it would sit a little bit higher than that. But if that's the highest it goes, then that's the highest it goes. As you can see, it's still got that massive arch gap there at the front. So I'm just dying to get these and also the small little 280mm brakes on there, which are really, really small. And the car's gonna look transformed once I get this on. Okay, so first things first. And then I just literally just put a few turns on so that when you jack it up, they don't fall straight down. Okay, slacking off these wheels. Get it up in the air. So there you have the baby size and these only small little 280s. I mean, for the pilot, it's gonna be pushing later on. It's gonna be a massive difference between this and the 312. Let me just grab the 312 to show you guys the difference side by side the discs it's pretty obvious I mean this conversion has been done loads and loads of times and it's a nice conversion to do nothing special there but yep let's get this done so I'm gonna walk you guys through my process as I always do guys you know how it goes first thing I'm gonna do first things first let's get the 30 mil 12 point take off the center hub for the drive shaft then I'm gonna do the ABS wiring then take off the caliper then take off the steering then take off the 13s 
and actually then obviously loosen off that top nut that I took off from the top mount and take that whole assembly off. First thing I do is put a nut in because otherwise you'll break the locating. Put a nice big hefty screwdriver to wedge in the disc. Okay, it's free, it goes in, nice. ABS sensor now. So now literally should just push, pull away. There you go. And now all I need to do is just loosen off those, that 22 at the top. So you have it, it's quite easy when you do it like this way and everything's smooth and you just change everything. Otherwise you've got to kind of hammer this out of there. And just repeat the same process on this side. Also I notice the grommet on this side is also missing. So that's two grommets I've got to replace. So the new upright's in, drop the subframe. So I'm just gonna to hold the, the draft shaft in place. I'm just gonna slide it through so it doesn't actually fall when I drop the subframe down. Subframe's dropped and taken out. So this is the new one waiting to go in. What happened was, I could hear a slight knock, knock from, only when I started it actually, and when I switched it off from the dog bone bush. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna be quite happy, I can replace it, the other one's got Powerflex bushes in it. But unfortunately, it looks like they've bodged it. Um, they've put like a heli coil or a bolt in there and they've then welded a nut to it so that that actually doesn't come off, that doesn't. So until I actually fit the other engine and gearbox in. I'm actually stuck with this dog bone mount because obviously I've drilled the gearbox out to this M12 or whatever it is. So I'm not, I haven't got a bolt. And I'm not gonna re-drill the other dog mount bush to fit an M12 in just for this gearbox. Cause then obviously the other one is just normal with an, an M10. So I'm not gonna mess around with this. So I'm just gonna put this back on. And then when I sell the engine and gearbox of this, I'll sell that with the gearbox and make the, the new owner know that that is the case with this. So let's get this, uh, this subframe with this anti-roll bar on and then we're almost uh, on the home straight once this is in. So I finally got it all on. It was definitely a battle with that gearbox because that bolt actually snapped so I had to reach, I had to cut the bolt off and I had to do some bits and pieces and the smaller bolt as well on the dog bone I had to re-tap the gearbox to a slightly bigger size. So that's all on. So that took a bit longer than expected, but I'm happy I bled all the brakes. Now it's a moment of truth, put the wheels on and get the, the front down. Cause I've obviously raised it up from where it was. So hopefully to match the back and it's not sitting nose heavy or actually reverse rake. Okay, so now that we've done the lowering, I just popped over to the scrapyard and this always annoys me coming in seeing this that far away. Unfortunately, they had no fuse boxes there, but I was able to get a cover that ho that's got the clips on it. So at least that won't stick out as that was. But I will get to that as soon as I, I have to go to the other scrap yard. There's one further away to see if they've got a, a good fuse box. And I'm just fed up one of seeing it sticking out every time I open the door. And this, I don't know why they painted that. It just looks silly. And as you can see, with a broken clip and that one's got it so hopefully when I click this one into place it will actually stay flush and not kind of have this gaping hole looking at me sorted another thing I didn't like was this it was the airbag cover I don't know if you guys can really see it but it's all kind of all wavy because of the heat and stuff so again I sourced one in the scrapyard which is really, really straight. So I'm just gonna change that over quickly. I think it's only, literally you do is just pull it off 
and it reveals the airbag it looks like it's been stuck on and stuff but it, but yeah so i've just got those eight mils and i can put the new one on right so slowly but surely i'm getting there that looks a lot more a lot more tidier okay so next thing to get on with is changing that mirror and also this switch it kind of goes down but it doesn't go up Right, so I got the window working, the switch, also replaced the switch while I'm there to do the, the mirror. So the switch goes up and down now. Also, there's loads of clips broken, but again, luckily, I've got loads of these, so I'm gonna replace all these little clips that hold the door card in place. Right, so one thing I noticed on the Smuggler's Mark IV, uh, it's got like aero wipers on it, but they're not kind of conversions. They're actually full wipers. I don't know if they're from another model, potentially. I mean, it had this rear wiper, which basically looks like an OEM wiper, just with an aero blade on it, not this one. I mean, you put them side by side, there is a slight, it is slightly smaller or slightly shorter, should I say. But actually, when once it's on the car, it doesn't look like there'll be much of a difference actually. So let's just go put this on the car. So just to show you guys, I mean, I don't think you actually need any more than that really. Looks like it, it will clear fine. I mean, it doesn't need to go any higher than that. There's no point seeing anyway. So I think it's got a, a fairly good, a fairly good reach. So I think that'll do for me. And it definitely looks a lot, a lot neater on the back there as well. Also got myself an original VW triangle and also first aid kit to fit in its location. It's also a bit dusty in here. Let me give this a bit of a clean. Okay, so first things first, get the first the triangle in there. It should fit in here comfortably. Oh, look at that. It fits in there perfectly. I'm sure you guys actually couldn't see. Actually, I think I got it wrong. The first aid kit goes on this side, actually, not on that side. So, but that does actually fit in there pretty cool, though. But okay, I won't put that in there. I'll put other stuff in there. All right, well. This one definitely needs a clean. And I'm assuming it'll just be a case of uh, sliding it in and it should just fit. Look at that. Like a glove. Yep, and it doesn't rattle either. That's really cool. Right, so next up is gonna be these rear window regulators. Someone went to the effort of making this up and then put a really cheap Pioneer speaker on. I mean, these weren't even actually bolted on very well, so it's not gonna help with the sounds because it did resonate actually a little bit when you turned it up. So it's gonna be a big improvement once I actually fix this on there properly uh, and also bond it on and put, I think I might have some better speakers. So a little bit of that soundproofing, some speed clips, and that is literally not going to vibrate or resonate when the volume's turned up. Also, I found I did find a set of speakers. <sighs> a set of these hertz. Unfortunately, got a tweeter in it. They're not not um, not just mids, but I mean, what was in there already was playing full range, so this will be fine, I guess. But anything's better than than that. Okay, and also, as well as the lowering, as you saw in the video, did a few other little bits, put the first aid kit in, 
putted in the, the uh, breakdown triangle and also got this um, fixed three windows that weren't working properly. The rear ones, the regulators were totally knackered. This front one, the regulator was fine. It was just a switch that wasn't working and obviously took advantage and also replaced from the UK car, uh, the door mirror. I mean, for me, it just looks more symmetrical. I prefer it with the two larger mirrors than one small and one large, just neither here nor there. And uh, there's something about the wagon. I mean, obviously the front end is the front end of a Golf. It looks like any other Golf, really Mark IV, obviously. With the Impro, it looks quite cool. I can't wait also to take the bumper on there with the Hentland washers. That'll improve the front end. The 312s look very, very good behind these RX 504s. And for me, the wagon is the, 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 the better angle for it. It's kind, of, it's kind of almost here when they're lowered. A nice angle it looks boxier and surprisingly yes this kit was obviously off that mark 4 the smugglers car and that handled really really well this one has got more weight so weight doesn't actually help handling it's more mass that you've got to move around but in a strange way maybe because the rear is kind of boxed and it's not that tailgate shape maybe the rear of the car is actually stiffer because it definitely handles a little bit different it's a little bit more kind of positive steering direction is a little bit sharper changing direction with the steering from you know from left to right just the steering's definitely improved on it so i can't wait really to get the rest of the, the of the track car front end bits which are which will consist of the tt hubs and lower arms say it lay on krupa r front anti roll bar which is really really small uh, though i've got for the subframe as you saw at the back of the subframe on the front you've got these bushes and they really deteriorate and i've actually got aluminium inserts from 034 motorsport as well as also i've got camera adjustable solid mounts for the top so i can dial in some negative camber as well as the caster with the tt stuff moves it forward and gets the roll angles all back to how it should be and it definitely improves the steering feel and the front end bite and then obviously then it'll be obviously time for the engine conversion off that stuff off the 130 with a hybrid turbo and all those bits and pieces so this will push about hopefully around anywhere between 2 and 220. so i feel like in two episodes i've done quite a lot in this car but there is so many more issues to sort out with there's the ac to figure out why it's not working and switch i can't remember the code for it now there's also the glove box to be fixed there's other other loads of little bits to be done there's also the engine conversion to be done and loads of other little updates and also loads of how to's as well on this so if you guys have got a mark 4 or if you know someone's got a mark 4 share this video please support the channel ding a ling a ling click on that notification bell to beat the youtube algorithm and please keep safe